good good morning good afternoon good evening to whoever is watching this video at whatever time welcome to the back chat with the back doctor and with me today I have someone very very special her name is Dr. Laura now Dr. Laura Dr. Laura, I'm going to not mess this up, so I'm going to write down, like read what is written down letter to letter. Dr. Laura graduated from RMIT University back in 2018 with a double degree in health science and applied science specializing in chiropractic. Worked alongside Dr. Wayne Todd, the founder of the SD protocol in 2018. She has a special interest in helping others maximize their true health potential and love teaching others how to improve their sleep, energy and other chronic diseases. Since working as an associate, she left and founded a company which had three practices in Victoria and one in Queensland. Amazing. And then sold the business to start her dream clinic 10 minutes from the beach in Robina in the Gold Coast. And currently practicing full time, she runs many local workshops, helping the community and businesses improve their sleep, energy, and help them reach their full health potential. Boom! How was that, Dr. Laura? That was awesome. What an introduction. Thank you so oh, much, today. You're welcome. You're one of the best. So I have to get you on there and I have to build you up as the best of the best. <laughs> Thank you so much. I super appreciate being on this morning. Thanks, Dr. Oz. You're welcome. Because the, the theme of today is really all about sleep. You know, get in, getting better sleep. So many people come to us every single day and saying, yeah, I'm tossing, I'm turning, I'm not sleeping, I'm not waking up feeling refreshed, I'm waking up sore, I'm sleeping sore, I'm constantly waking up at night, have I missed any? Yeah, or or we also get the contrary as well. I'm I'm sleeping, I'm getting and I've been there before. So when I finished high school, I was there when I, I didn't know how to eat healthy, I didn't know how to look after my body. And I was in the position where I was sleeping nine, sometimes ten hours a night, waking up mm -hmm. in the morning and I was just exhausted. Yeah. Get home from work, no energy, you'd have to have a afternoon nap, so yeah, we get lots of people that are struggling to get to sleep, but then also people that are getting sleep, but they're just not getting that quality sleep as well. It's quite oh, yeah. common that we get that too. So let's talk a bit about that. You know, I we got a bit of an introduction into you. And can you specifically talk about a bit about your journey as into, you know, what really got you so passionate about chiropractic care? You know, and why do you do what you do? Absolutely, I'd love to. So, um, I I actually grew up going to a chiropractor. I started seeing a chiro when I was 10, but my family saw a chiropractor quite symptomatically, which is what a lot of people's experience is with chiropractic, that we don't see a chiropractor until something hurts, because a lot of people are brought up with this treatment paradigm that we don't invest in our health until we're at crisis point and then we want to get on top of something because it's stopping us from doing the things that we want to do or have to do or love to do as well so that was definitely my family luckily we didn't go down the medical route if we had hay fever or asthma um, or if we're having flare-ups with um, cold and cold and flu season two straight thing was uh, the first thing we would do is our parents would take us to the chiropractor so we we were brought up with chiropractic care um however it wasn't on a wellness vitality basis definitely on that symptom basis and then when i was 18 um, my dad was actually diagnosed with prostate cancer and at the time of diagnosis my dad was a very unhealthy man he ran his own business he was a financial boy still is a financial mm -hmm. planner and he was often working seven days a week. I'm one of four girls. He had a terrible relationship with us. There was a lot of anger and hatred and stress in his life. Mm. He wasn't getting, getting good quality sleep with the theme of today. He didn't know the importance of exercise. He didn't know why he should look after his nervous system and eat good nutrition either. So when dad was diagnosed, he knew that he could either go down the traditional medical route, chemotherapy, surgery, radiation therapy, but innately dad knew that there was a better way to better health because his body was not a healthy place to live 
and somewhere where disease could grow through there too. So dad went over to Bali and did a health retreat over there for a month. Um, completely changed his lifestyle, learned about the importance. They had a chiropractor over there about looking after your spine and your nervous system on a wellness basis, not on a treatment basis. Wow. He also learned about the importance of movement and yoga and expressing love and gratitude. And when he could, um, sorry, while he was over there, he was doing a fast. So he was over there and he did a water fast for two weeks. Okay. Um, fasting is incredibly healthy for your body and incredibly powerful for your body, which is probably a conversation for another day that we could have. Yeah, I was curious about this water fast. Very yeah, dumb, very it's cool. incredible, incredible for your body. But um, yeah, he, he really learned how to look after his health. So we flew over to Bali and we saw Dad over in Bali. And first of all, he'd lost like 23 kilos, which I could hardly recognize and he needed to lose the weight. And I can just see how much younger and how much more vital dad was. So dad um, and the family, we could fly back to Melbourne in Australia, which is where we were living at the time. And he got a check from his urologist and his urologist said to him, his marks had gone down so much. He said, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. And we'll do another check up in six months. And to this day, that was 12 years ago. Crazy. Gives you chills, hey? So dad's, um, yeah, 12 years ago. And so dad's been drug free, surgery free, um, radiation free the entire time. So it just shows how incredibly powerful our human body is. So um, I knew, I always knew that I wanted to do some sort of healthcare. I thought I wanted to do medicine or become a physio. Mm -hmm. But then seeing my dad's incredible transformation in, in his health and just the principles of chiropractic made sense to me that your body has an innate intelligence and if you remove interference then your body's got that amazing potential to be able to self-regulate and self-heal and we know that innately our body wants to heal itself we've mm -hmm. just got to make sure that we can either get rid of the toxicities and supply our body with anything that it might be deficient in as well so Absolutely. that's my backstory but um yeah i went through a health transformation myself which got me really interested in in sleep which is the topic of today yeah. And also having more energy and being able to make sure that we keep our body vital and full of energy and avoid chronic disease too. So, um, yeah, I've definitely been on my own health journey over the last, I'd say, 13 years. And I feel like at 30, I've got more energy than ever and sleep better than ever. And, yeah, I love it. loving it. Oh, you're always a bundle of energy. I love it. It's so good. It's so good. Um, Thank you. Um, if you're ready, let's get straight into it. Sure. Let's go. All right. So let's first of all talk a bit more about how chiropractic can actually, actually even before we talk about chiropractic, how about we talk about the most common sleep issues that we see? Sure. Um, would you like me to start? Actually, you can start, Dr. Laura. Sure. So um, common question that we get asked as practitioners working, adjusting patients, is um, first of all sleeping positions because a lot of people say oh, you know sleeping on my tummy I sleep on my tummy is that bad for me <laughs> I don't is know. that bad you for us Dr. Oz? Uh, if I'm doing this for six hours straight yeah 100 percent yeah or this one yeah that one <laughs> <laughs> Or we've got the the ninja as well, which is where you're half on your tummy, half on half on your side. I don't know if I can bring my leg up. Ugh. Yep, that one. That one's yeah. the one. So um, my answer to that question every single time is: Do you do you think sleeping on your tummy is good for you? What do you think, Doctor Oz? Well, based on what you just said, I would always say sleeping on my tummy is no good. It is unhealthy. Yeah, yeah. So there's there's many reasons why that is. Um, first of all, hopefully we're not getting six hours of sleep like Dr. Oz is. Um, but first of all, our neck's going to be twisted for, I'm hoping that most people are trying to get at least eight hours sleep. Yeah. Our neck's going to be twisted like this for eight hours. And we speak about stress in the body causing subluxation patterns. Do you think that could cause subluxation in your neck? 100%. 100%, no doubt about it. Absolutely. The other thing as well is when we're sleeping on our tummy, we're actually starting to compress our airways through here as well. And um, we know as well, and there's been so much science behind this coming out now, it's all over social media too, about the importance of nasal breathing and not mouth breathing. 
Mm. Our, our nose is our first filter that we have to be able to filter out any sort of toxins and pollutants that we have in our environment. So when we're sleeping on our face, the chance of us being able to nasal breathe and get proper oxygenation throughout our sleep is just yeah diminished. So anyway, point of this is so with sleeping on our tummy, we have a lot of clients that say, oh, I've been sleeping on my tummy my whole life. How do I get out of that habit? And I always teach try and try and sleep on your side or on your back and just go to bed with the intention to do that but if you find that you just can't get comfortable just don't get stressed out about it and try again tomorrow night yeah so you're better off to get a, a full night's sleep in the wrong position than to be stressing and then not sleep at all so but um with sleeping positions if you're a side sleeper that's much more preferred or sleeping on your back as well so our pillow recommendations always come um are always a question that we get as well is what sort of pillow should I get and the answer to that question is it's it's very dependent um, first of all on how broad your shoulders are yep. and then also on your mattress as well because if you've got a soft mattress your shoulders going to go into the mattress a lot more than if you've got a firm mattress so that's why it's definitely good to chat to your chiropractor about yep. what pillow is recommended for you so for example when I sleep on my side I find that broader shoulders some pillows that are too small, I'm doing these. So mm -hmm. just picture me on my side. Versus I need something higher to help support me. So I keep my nose in line with my sternum rather than twisting or tilting one way or the other or tilting too much the other way. And now you're stretching one side, compressing the other. Mm -hmm. So definitely massive, makes a massive, massive difference. And I always say invest in a good mattress, invest in a good pillow because it really just helps the quality of your sleep. Huge, huge. And it's, it's crazy when you put it this way, but we spend on average 30% of our life in bed. And so to think that we, we might be spending all this money on getting an eye watch, we might be spending all this money on good nutrition, on making sure we wear nice clothes, but so many people aren't willing to spend in a, money into a good mattress, which is just insane. Funny that you mentioned it. I don't know if you can see this, but look at this sleep I had, like you said, six hours like Dr. Oz. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. Okay, so is that the next question? <laughs> how much How much sleep should I get? I would say it's about the quality of your sleep versus the quantity of your sleep. But I'm yes. sure there's like a sweet spot you need to sleep in. Yeah, so when we look at sleep research, most people that are required to get to function normally and optimally to get seven to nine hours of quality sleep per night. Yeah. So they have um, a lot of people will argue, oh, I don't need that much. I only need four to six hours. Five, and they've done studies on this. 5% of people of the population are what they call the sleepless elite, which means genetically they can get five or six hours of sleep, but that's only 5% of the population. So mm. Some people are used to getting five or six hours of sleep and then justify it. I only need that much, but we know for the majority of the population, power so through. <laughs> it is that seven to nine hours. But yeah, like you were saying, Dr. Oz, definitely getting the sleep quality is more important than the quantity. Like when I was back at 18 and didn't know how to look after my health and I was getting nine or 10 yeah. hours of sleep, but it wasn't sleep quality. It was the quantity, not the quality. Oh, so good. Throwing, throwing nuggets and diamonds here at, at this point, which is always good. So the other thing that we should have a look at is, you know, lifestyle. People, people always talk about how lifestyle, actually people don't actually understand how much of their lifestyle affects their sleep. So can you talk a bit about the impact that people's lifestyles can have on their sleep, please? Sure. What a what a question, hey. So, the in my how many years have I been in practice now? Six years of practice. The most common lifestyle factor that will affect your sleep is stress. Would you agree? Hundred percent. So, being able to make our body more resilient to stress and being able to bounce back from stress and being able to manage stress as well so um dr oz maybe we'll talk about what sort of stressors people put on their bodies every single day 
I think it's good. Um, that could affect their sleep. And then we'll have... Why don't, why don't we have a chat about what sort of stressors people might put on their body every single day that is going to affect their sleep? And then we can have a chat about, on the contrary, how chiropractic can help. Absolutely. I think that's a great way. This is like the golden nugget section right now anyway. If people take away one thing, it's this. This section. Alrighty, let's do it then. So, can I start? Sure, go for it. My mind doesn't switch off. Dr. Oz can't sleep. I'm always racing. I'm always, my mind's always racing. And that's what I would call like an emotional, mental stress. Help me, Dr. Laura. Okay, so <laughs> it's common because that's the way that our nervous system works. So brief intro into our nervous system. We have our autonomic nervous system, which controls literally everything in your body, which is our brain. And our autonomic nervous system can be in one of two states and it can't be in both at the same time. It can either be in the parasympathetic response, which is our, our good stuff for most of the time. Rest, digest. We're gonna go back to parasympathetic we got to get back to parasympathetic. Yeah. yeah. Start again at parasympathetic, please. Yeah. So we've got our parasympathetic nervous system, which is resting, sleeping, digesting, reproducing, and repairing. So we want to be in that most of the time. And then we've got the other branch of our autonomic nervous system, which is our sympathetic nervous system, or our fight or flight response, which most yeah. people are more aware of that term which is um, fight, flight, or freeze as well. And so our nervous system should be able to, it should be like a light switch. It should be able to go through both. And it's actually mm -hmm. important for us to have that fight or flight response and it gets a bad name. But if you've got somebody in, in the middle of the night who breaks into your house, you need to have that fight or flight response switched on because you need to be able to either fight them or to run away. However, uh, mm. that part of our brain, that autonomic nervous system, that fight or flight response is a very primitive ancient part of our brain that hasn't developed since we were Neanderthals millions of years ago. And that's our, that's our natural survival mechanism. And our brain doesn't know the difference between stress because we've got somebody breaking into our house in the middle of the night or stress because Dr. Oz is thinking throughout the day. He's got so much going on in his mind, but it's triggering that fight or flight response. Yeah. Let me ask you a question, Dr. Oz. If if you've got an intruder breaking into your house, is it important for you to be able to fall asleep? Just like, nah, I'll just I'll just go back to sleep, you know, <laughs> just let them break in. No, nah, you, nah, need, you, gotta, you, need... you gotta be alert. You gotta yeah. be alert, you gotta be ready. Yeah. We've gotta have that spike of glucose. We've, we've got to have that spike of energy, spike of cortisol, which is our stress hormone, to go into our blood so that we can either fight the intruder or to run away mm. as well. Um, but what's happening is because we have, and it's in my opinion since the day of the internet where we're on our emails all the time, we're plugged in on the, all the time, our work doesn't finish at 9 o'clock. We're often working until, some for some people, late into the nighttime hours where our brain's thinking, 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 and then we try to we try to go to sleep and we're like, why are we just thinking like this? Yeah. We've got this, this replay going on. Mm -hmm. And such a big, yeah, such a big component. And I know we've got to learn to recognise what's stressing us so that we can actually start to address it so that our sleep quality goes up. Because like you said, our body's primitive, it doesn't know the difference. Mm -hmm. It just recognizes as a sympathetic response, a flight or flight response, keeps it like that. Mm -hmm. And then another stress that we normally go through is like the physical. Yeah, mm. yeah, this is huge. This is so huge. So do you want me to unpack that a little bit more, Dr. Oz? Of course. So uh, very, very common that we see in our practices every single day because of the day of technology is people with forward head posture and rounded shoulders. How do I do? Yeah. So there's been a- How do you good? <laughs> yeah, you did a good job. Thanks for demonstrating for us. Uh... So there is a stack of research showing us that our brain and our body, they're always talking, right? 
And when, yeah. when we have this forward head posture and our shoulders round forwards, our body actually feeds back to our brain that we're stressed and we're anxious. Because if you, if you see someone like this, do you think they're a confident, calm and collected person? Never. No. Always seem stressed, upset. Always seem stressed, okay. Well, well mm. what happens to us? When we're stressed, when you've got that monkey mind going in the middle of the night and you're worrying about something, what happens? Closed in. We, we end up closed in spot on. So we definitely, there's definitely a physical element when it comes to um, putting stress onto our body as well. So the most common one that we see is forward head posture, rounded shoulders as well. And it's because of our modern lifestyle. It's unnaturally stressful in our body. And you know, unpacking that a bit more, I notice that not just with like technology, you know, um, phones and screens. If you're a mum, for example, you're constantly if you're a new fresh mum, for example, even if you've got young children, you're constantly bending over, lifting them up, or you're breastfeeding, so you're always in that constant down position. Or if you're like a, um, not an office worker, but let's say you're a trader, you're constantly hunched forward, looking down, constantly having to work your body, and that's always just putting all that tension onto you, and as a result, that just builds and builds until it starts to cause issues when it comes to your sleep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's huge. And for most people, it's usually we teach in the office macro traumas and micro traumas. Mm -hmm. An example of a macro trauma might be a whiplash in a car accident, but it's usually the micro traumas that are the biggest culprit with our modern day society, yeah. which is things like, like Dr. Oz was saying, consistently bending and lifting if we're a tradie, being a new mum, or working behind computers and being on mobile phones. And honestly, Dr. Laura, I thought we would have more time to go through more stuff. We are so, we've got so much more to unpack. Would you agree? We've got so much more to unpack. Would you be down to do a part two? Yeah, absolutely. Well, we've, yeah. we've, we're at time and we've got heaps more to go through. So I'm down for a part two. Awesome.